Good day, I am Lindsay Aigapinate and I'll be one of your presenters for today's video. But first, let me ask you a simple question. How much do you use social media every day? And during those times, how much fake news do you think you come across? The growing popularity of social media because of the technological advancement of our society has made most people use social media in their daily lives. But because of this, it has led to the widespread dissemination of misinformation and disinformation. The rapid spread of social media usage is now more apparent because social media is being used as a means of communication during an outbreak of disease, and most especially for the presidential election wherein users communicate and spread information regarding the candidates that they support. Given the prevalence of misinformation online, it is critical that users take steps to differentiate fact from fiction. This is especially important now that the number of social media users is growing and information can be obtained quickly and easily. Therefore, educating the public on the dangers of fake news should be one of the priority in our society. With this, we are going to identify the problems caused by fake news on social media and what are the ways in how we can overcome them by giving solutions to the problems. Thank you, Gabinete, for that wonderful introduction. So, hello guys, my name is Johan Maurice Pancho, and I'm one of the presenters for today's video. And today, I will tackle about the problems and what are the solutions of it regarding misinformation on social media. So, as we all know, firstly, majority of people indulge and utilize social media. It arises from the modern-day technological advancement. It is evident that almost everyone uses social media in their daily lives. Because of the coronavirus outbreak, everyone is forced to use the internet in every aspect of their life. As many lost their jobs, the country went into an economic crisis, but more importantly, online job opportunities emerge while classes are held online. Hot suit. A social media management platform conducted a global overview report concerning social media usage. And according to their report, 58.4% of the world population are users of social media, the internet. Considering the world population, it's quite enormous in my opinion. Regardless of user demographics, anyone can post anything in social media through the free platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Even though social media has various substantial effects that improve the quality of life, there would inevitably be consequences upon using it too much. The internet is prone to misinformation as an abundance of fake news is propagated. It may be a destructive repercussion affecting the behavior of people, be that as it may, Training people to absorb information comprehensively may mitigate damages, however, not particularly to eliminate the root cause of misinformation. The second issue that needs to be addressed is that most of the information are generalized statements. Generalized, concise statements are more memorable. It's a good start on starting a foundation in Puyong a point in every literary and academic literature. However, on the contrary, negating such general principles require effort and sometimes it's burdensome to justify the resistance and to elaborate as well. The news headlines are good examples of such general statements. Furthermore, the facts that are misinterpreted can also be problematic especially when it involves public safety and leads to false misleading decisions in hindsight. Falsified information supplemented by unnecessary ideas are quite hard to distinguish if you're not careful or wary. A social weather station survey carried out a, sur a survey in December 2021 regarding the ability of Filipinos to spot fake news and it provided a substantial result whereas 51% of the samples find it difficult in distinguishing fake news in all forms of media and most of them are 
have lower educational attainment, such as non-elementary graduates and elementary graduates. It proved how al alarming the situation is to the Philippines, where the majority do not know how to distinguish accurate from false information. Thus, educating citizens regarding the matter requires a burdensome endeavor in the same magnitude of technological development. Those who lack information literacy bear the most damages, especially children who are illiterate and yet to understand such matters. And lastly, but certainly not the least, is that misinformation has, has already done its harm once it was rendered and reached the netizens. What's more dangerous is when disinformation occurs, where this information is where false information is extensively spread effortlessly, just like misinformation. However, it is subjective. It is subjected along with deceptive, malicious intent. Although there are legal consequences in spreading fake news, there are still too many to spot, as tons of information are posted daily on social media platforms. Such are rampant during the pandemic and electoral campaigns, as. Supporters spread hate and deceptive information. Such information are propagated to the so-called internet trolls. Those internet trolls are empower the, the toxic attitudes such as that even if truth prevails, neglecting the awareness of it with consideration of opposing views may still take over a person's mind arising from subjective biases and personal gains. Yvonne Chua a journalism associate professor at the University of the Philippines and a veteran journalist as well, expressed her views in a webinar called The Battle of the Trolls. She stressed that both the targets of the trolls and the trolls themselves are both victims of those heated arguments of, the, of what they do. As victims fall from misinterpreted ideas and trolls traded their immorality to, for short term compensation. The fact that people are getting paid by providing false information may be considered unavoidable as of now, but it can be mended with precise conceptions in distinguishing what sources are reliable. So there you have the problems arising from misinformation on social media. But the question, can anyone stop it? or just avoid it, or even mitigate it? Is there any solution to those trolls or deceptive people who have ill will for whatever reason that they are doing? The truth is, mitigating damages dealt by misinformation is quite difficult to deal with because it arises from several factors such as what I stated earlier, such as influence, uh, post-influence by misleading facts, financial incentives, independence of media to do so, and lack of critic and digital competence of consumers. It deteriorates as more netizens view such misleading posts promulgated by them, by those ill will deceptive people. Brigada, a fact or fake featuring Joseph Morong, a Philippine investigative television program by GMA News, interviewed a troll army leader that goes by the name of Don. It's, it's alias Don, if you call it in Filipino terms. He was interviewed on how the troll farm, how his troll farm trade works. By revealing his 500 trolls in his network, operating 180 to 200 accounts per worker, with a monthly salary of 30,000 to 70,000 pesos, providing solutions to that takes time because it goes to show how manipulative social media can be from any demographic and how it can be incentivized as ways to make money. It requires a strenuous effort by not only me or you who are watching by, by everyone, the government, the private sectors, internet consumers, and also the international media and techno technology companies such as Facebook, whatever corporations, Facebook and Twitter, 
beyond it's beyond the country's control. Of course, regulation, its propagation, and the uses of usage of social media is up to the lawyers. However, combating it requires immediate action. The best of the best resolve for the matter is to be provided by the schools in which still depends on the students. Nowadays, having a weak stand against false information around social media is rampant. This calls for the need of the best quality education for the majority of the people of the country. And thus, this is the number one solution that must be centered upon. Attaining the privilege and the right to be educated allows people to be critical thinkers. Someone who is level-headed tends to have wise decision-making skills. A must skill for a person to withstand false information is being a critical thinker. Critical thinking is a way to evaluate and analyze arguments in terms of their credibility and have a firm stand on arguments. Hence, a person who achieved the best quality education has the advantage to fact check and analyze credibility sources credibility of sources rather according to their soundness and reliability. However, to do that, high school and college sources related to history, information literacy, language, and research shall be rigorously and critically thought as they provide essential learning competencies concerning citing reliable primary and secondary sources of information, external and internal criticism to the matter, and also, not the least, by reading comprehension and writing skills along with integrity of academic and literary outputs. Learners need not to, to become historians or digital analysts or English teachers themselves to become that, but at least they are equipped of the fundamental necessities in determining online deceptive media posts where they can criticize the latter and utilize what they have learned. And that's for the solution that we can use in, in combating uh, misinformation social media. For the, for the conclusion, back to Gabinete. To end this presentation, fake news on social media continues to be a major issue in our society. Despite educational institutions' effort to educate us on how to avoid spreading it and how to identify it. In particular, during this election season and in view of the pandemic, there has been an increase of fake news on social media sites. As students, we have the opportunity to become more well-versed in this subject, especially given our generation's prosperity for technology. As media users, we have all experienced and encountered fake news in our social media feeds. But we have learned not to immediately trust the account behind the post and instead look for reliable sources and evidence to back up their claims. Furthermore, developing these solutions can assist people in recognizing and emphasizing the problem of fake news in our society. Education is always the best solution to many problems because it not only develops critical thinkers, but also opens up to new information and perspectives. That is all. Thank you.